go before the Lord in prayer. And whatever you need the Lord to do for you today, it's just simple as asking. Ask him in faith and believe, and he will come to your rescue. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My
revived. We come for refreshing. We come to be restored. We come to be energized. We come to be encouraged, God. And we know that the only place that we can receive this is in your house. So, Lord, we ask you that you allow your Holy Spirit to rest in this place. Lord, let it come in like a mighty rushing wind. Lord, let it come in that it may break chains and may destroy yokes. Father, you said in your word, in your word, that the anointing destroys the yokes of bondage. You said, Lord, that it destroys every yoke. So, Lord, the only way that we can experience being broken away from the yokes that seems to be around our necks, or the chains that seem to be around our ankles. Lord, we need your presence to show up. Lord, we need your anointing to show up. Lord, when your anointing shows up, it helps us to be able to comprehend. It helps us to be able to acknowledge our shortcomings. It help us to be able to retain the knowledge that you brought out in your word. Lord, without your anointing, we can't have church. Without your presence, God, we cannot pray. We cannot sing and we cannot read scripture. Lord, without your anointing, we cannot be able to witness. So now, Lord, we ask you that you will pour it down on us right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Some of us have got weak bodies. Some of our bodies are racking with pain. Some of us are still stressed in areas that we need to just give it to you, God. Because of your goodness, because of your mercy, because of your grace, because of your long suffering, because of your patience that you had towards us. God, we just love you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we magnify your name. Lord, we don't want to sound like a broken record. But Lord, we know that if we call you in faith, you will come to our rescue. If we call you in faith, that you will come and see about us. So Lord, I'm asking you, come and see about us. Come see about me. God, uh, come see the Monroe sisters. Uh, come see Sister Robin. Uh, come see Sister Leah. Uh, come see Tyler and Madison. Uh, come see the Honoree family. Uh, come see the Earth family. Uh, come and see the musicians family. Uh, come and see Sister Felicia family. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, Lord, come and see for the Sears family. Lord, let us feel your presence. Let us feel your touch, uh -huh. let us feel your presence, uh -huh. let us feel your touch, uh -huh. Lord, somebody uh -huh, that is listening to us uh -huh. right now, Facebook and YouTube, uh -huh. they got some issues, uh -huh. and if you right now deliverance, uh -huh. we tarry on their behalf, uh -huh. we speak on their behalf. God, do the work uh -huh, that we know that you can do. Uh -huh. And Lord, while you do it, uh -huh, give us the spirit. Uh -huh. Help us to receive it. Uh -huh. Help us to adopt it. Uh -huh. Help us to apply it uh -huh. in our life. And we give you glory. Uh -huh. We give you honor. Uh -huh. We magnify your name. Uh -huh. Come on, saints. Uh -huh. I need you to step to your feet. Come on, saints. Uh -huh. Clap your hands, uh -huh. I need for you to tell God uh, what you need. Uh -huh. Some of us in here, uh -huh. you know you need something. Uh -huh. I don't know what you need. Uh -huh. Your brothers and sisters don't know what you need. Uh -huh. But the Lord, uh -huh. he knows what you need. Uh -huh. And he's waiting to hear your voice. Uh -huh. He's waiting to hear your cry. Uh -huh. So now is the time uh -huh. to cry out. And tell God uh, uh, what you need. Uh, uh, come on, open your mouth. Uh, uh, come on, stretch out your hands. Uh, uh, come on, and lift your voice. Uh, uh, come on, and tell God uh, uh, that we need it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now, right now break through. Uh, uh, God, touch the world. Go uh, to uh, California. Uh, uh, touch Brother Honoree's body. Uh, uh, Come to God, uh -huh. touch 
touch the pastor with the body. Lord, go down in the country, a little place called Ghoston, North Carolina, and touch Bishop McCoy's body. Touch Bishop McCoy's mind. Touch Deacon Joe McCoy. Touch Deacon Bob McCoy. Deacon John McCoy, uh, touch their minds, uh, touch their bodies, uh, yeah, yes, uh, touch them, God, uh, let them feel, they uh, get a double seat, uh, let them feel, uh, your anointing in the atmosphere, uh, remember, uh, Sister Michelle Dowdy, uh, remember, uh, let them share with prayer, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, remember that place, uh, and not only, not only those people, but go on a few days to the church down there. Thank missionary. They need a revival. They need a breakthrough. There's some souls. They need to be delivered. Yeah. Oh, yes. Have your way in this place. Every church that I have not called out. God, they need a visitation. Uh -huh. Yes, they do. Uh -huh. They need to feel uh -huh. an anointing uh -huh. that they never uh -huh. said before. Uh -huh. Yes, Lord, uh -huh. shake up the place. Shake up the mountains. Uh -huh. Let them know uh -huh. that you're coming back uh -huh. and you're coming quicker. Uh -huh. Yes, God. Uh -huh. Shake them up, God. Uh -huh. Shake up their spirits, uh, shake up their minds, uh, whatever you need to do, uh, because they're our family, they are our friends, uh, and we don't want them lost, uh, no, we don't, uh, that's the reason we call it on the dog, uh, the other reason, uh, the McCoy's family, uh, the Monroe's family, uh, the Jones family, uh, the Owens family, uh, the Mar
quick to thank him for the goodness, so quick to thank him for all the great things. But then when we have challenges, that's when we back off. But that's when we need to be praising and thanking him the more in those challenging times. And I just want to say, you don't have to pump and prime me, for I know just how good you have.
that is not, um, it's not important. Uh, we, we seem to act as if though, uh, well, it ain't going to happen here. Well, thank God that the Lord hadn't allowed it to happen here yet. But trust me when I tell you, because of the way that America is going in, there's a lot that America is going to have to reap because of the wicked stuff behind closed doors that they have done, not just to their own people, but to those other countries as well. Um, even down to those that are preaching now. You know, we, we got great um, theologians who have gone to school and they'll learn teachers. And some went into the ministry because it was a financial situation for them. In other words, they saw themselves making money. They saw how that if they got a master's degree, a doctorate degree, or a PhD degree, that it would put them in a category to where that they can apply for the largest church in the city and they can get uh, top pay as well as top benefits. And they are really not concerned about the souls of people. All they're concerned about is what they can get out of it for themselves. But they have to present a picture to make it look as if though that they're in line with God and that they are a mouthpiece for God. However, uh, with them doing that, the victims become the membership. The victims become those who are caught up in the education of the preacher instead of looking at the behavior and the character of the preacher. Uh, you got men that are uh, in the eyesight of their peers, they're very, very highly educated, but they're not anointed. And by not being anointed, now the congregation does not benefit from the things of God because the anointing is not moving. Everything is being issued out by the knowledge of man. Nothing is being issued out by the Spirit of God. I heard, you hear what I'm saying? There's a difference between a man that has the Spirit of God compared to a man that don't have the Spirit of God. He may know the one that don't have the Spirit of God. He may know the content of the letter, but he can't never see it from the spiritual end of it. And when you can't see it from the spiritual end of it, the chances are you can't live it. And when you can't live it, and then you challenge people that challenge you about that you should live it. Now you're saying, well, you know, uh, uh, Christ understands that we are not perfect people. Therefore, you know, we, we, we don't sin every day. Well, I don't have time to go uh, to, to deal with this argument today because it will take me away from where I'm going. But, but the thing is, is that Christ did not die and suffer like he did in human flesh for us to make a mockery out of what he did. He didn't die for us to keep doing the same thing. He didn't die for us to keep acting the same way. He didn't die for us to keep uh, saying that we are Christian, but we are acting like children of the devil. He didn't do that. And a lot has to do with what's been brought to the people's mind, what's been brought to the people's, uh, what's been brought to the plate that they are spiritually feeding from. When I look at this and look at how Peter is trying his best. Because remember now, these people, they, they scattered out now. They, they, they scattered, they gone, they done went and hide, they, they gone into hiding, some of them died. And having to see how different ones died, I can about imagine what they were going through with. To see a loved one cut up in body parts and cut off, cut up in the street. And they got to see these wild animals that smell human blood in the air come through the city and eat people alive. I can about imagine how they felt whenever they may have saw their son uh, being wrapped up in a, in, 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 a, in a bag or in some type of sack and rolled around in top and burnt alive. I can about imagine what they was dealing with. Uh, um, uh, I'm glad that I've never had to witness that. You ain't never had to witness that. America had never had to witness that. But there are some countries that are just that cruel when it comes down to you not going along with their God. If you don't believe me, check out what's going on in the Muslim country. If those Muslims find out that you are celebrating a man named Jesus, they will do you like they've done one of the girls that they had on YouTube. Where the young girl denounced being caught, being uh, uh, dealing with Islam. She, she denied Allah. And she accepted Christ Jesus as a Lord and Savior. And they stoned her. 
in the street. The first person that threw the stone was her father, her grandfather. They deliberately killed her in the street, but she was determined that she was not going to denounce who Jesus was. And let me tell you something, just because we saw that, don't think that it won't come here. Because with what is being bought and introduced to society right now, it's just a matter of time before it takes place. And we will really be blessed if the Lord take us out of here before that comes. See, some people say, well, you know, well, some things are going to happen after the rapture. Well, that's true. Uh, according to Revelation, there's some major things that's going to happen after the rapture. But there's some things that's going to happen before the rapture. Because God got to shake up some stuff. There's too many people playing games with folks' souls. There's too many preachers playing games with people's souls. Folks is dying and going to hell in a handbasket because no one has challenged them that they need to ask for forgiveness. They need to forgive folk. They need to quit sowing seeds of discord. How is it that you can have a church where we want to brag about the anointing is here? The anointing can't be in a place. Hear me good. The anointing can't be in a place where there's chaos. If Jesus said that him and the devil will not live in the same house, what makes you think that the Holy Spirit and the devil's spirit will be in the same house? It ain't going to be there. It ain't going to be there. The Holy Spirit can't be in the house when the preacher is a secret homosexual. It can't be in the house if he's a secret adulterer, if he's a fornicator, if he's a womanizer, if he cheats and steals. The anointing can't be in there. And when it is obvious of what he's doing, no one says anything because they say he's God's man. He's not God's man. God don't use folks like that. God use folks that are willing to be obedient to him. Now these people here was going through some major changes. And so Peter dealt with something that we probably let's deal with verse 1 today. I don't, I don't know how the Lord is going to move. I, 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 got, I got what he gave me. But there's one thing that I don't do. I don't try to play in my mind before I get here how I want this to go. Amen. Because uh, 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 the, the Holy Spirit can work. It can work low. It can work high. It can work in the mid, in the mid, in, in, in the middle. Uh -huh. It can come in like a mighty rushing wind, yes. or it can come in subtly. Mm -hmm. The thing is, the Holy Spirit, when it comes, is challenging the mindset. Of the person that's hearing what's being said. Right. Now, what I'm trying to get at today is, is this. I need for us to go home after today and seriously start meditating. Do I really have enough of God in me that I would have to question whether or not if I be challenged to denounce him, I don't have to have a second thought. If I denounce him, or if not, if I, other words, let me put it like this. If you denounce him, he denounce you. If somebody come up and says, we're going to kill your family, we're going to destroy your house, you fire him. We don't want you to work here no more because you are caught up in this man named Jesus. Do you have enough God in you that you can walk away and say, Lord, I know you will make the way? Or would we worry about, well, you know, I, Got this mortgage over here. I got my children over here, and they need my money. They need this and that. But now you have an option. The option that was bought to you was because you are a believer, right? Because you're a believer, we don't want you here. So you're gonna be fired. So they give you an option. The option is now if you deny who Jesus is, you can stay here and work. But if you own up to him, who he is, you got to leave. Now, what would be your choice? Think about it. Now, some people say, oh, I will leave. Well, that's what you say now. But when you begin to be pressed upon, and see, and people don't know, if it takes place, you might be in the worst debt in the world. Not only did you lose a job, but you lose everything else. You lose your livelihood. You ain't got no place to stay. Now, the reason why I'm asking you to think this way is because these people here, some, not all, but some began to disown the fact that they was a follower of Jesus Christ. Why? Because they witnessed their family and friends dying for the sake of the gospel. 
So by them doing this, now they done scattered abroad. So now here comes Peter. Peter says here in verse 1 of chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. If you got your Bible, please look at it. Please look at it. Please look, please look at this. He says in chapter 4, verse 1, For as much then as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, he says, arm yourself likewise, watch this now, with the same mind. Is that what your Bible says? Mm -hmm. For he that had suffered in the flesh had ceased from sin. Let's talk about arming yourself. Arming yourself with the mind of Christ. Arming yourself with the mind of Christ. Now, Peter here, he had explained, if you go back to chapter 3 and verse 17 and 18, you see where he says, and in that section, from uh, we talked about that last week, from chapters, from verse 13 all the way to really to the end Verse 22, he talked about suffering for doing good. But he says in verse 17, he says, For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. And what he was saying was, it's better for you, it's the will of God for you, that you suffer for doing good instead of doing evil. Then he says in verse 18, For Christ has, Christ also had once Watch this. Suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. In other words, he said Christ had already died. He died and he suffered once and for all. He done that for mankind so that mankind can get back in relationship with God. Remember now, mankind was out of relationship with God. That's why right, in the Old Testament days, they would have to sacrifice animals that was flawless. They couldn't sacrifice an animal that had a bad eye or a bad foot or a bad leg. They had to sacrifice animals that was pure. Sheep, goats, whatever they decided to use that God spoke to them. They couldn't bring anything. Bulls, they couldn't bring anything that was damaged. It had to be a flawless animal that was sacrificed shed the blood for the remission of the sin of the individual and his family. Uh -huh. Now, by them doing this, every time that they would have a repentance service, they go right back doing the same thing again. Uh -huh. God punishes them. They get themselves back right, make another sacrifice, go back and do the same thing again. And there was a meeting in heaven that took place where God, his son, and the Holy Spirit had a meeting. And this meeting was that God says, I'm going to send the last sacrificial lamb. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be my son. And the son came down in human flesh. Mm -hmm. He was born into a woman that was a virgin. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit dropped the seed of him inside the womb of Mary. Mm -hmm. And when he was born, he was born without sin. Mm -hmm. No sin was in him. Now, if Mary and Joseph would have conceived Jesus, he would have been born in sin and shaven in iniquity. Right. Right. Because of them not conceiving that he was born as Jesus, to keep him pure, the Holy Spirit brought him down into the womb of a woman that was a virgin that had never been touched. Yes. Yes. So because of that, he now is 100% man and 100% God. But watch this now. He experienced something that he'd never experienced before. God showed me that this morning while I was getting ready for church. He showed me that when Jesus was in heaven with him, he didn't know what it felt like to be human. Because he was God. He was God's son. So now he comes down to earth, and now he's going to experience something in the flesh that he'd never experienced before. And by him experiencing this, now watch this. By him experiencing this, he's now able to feel what flesh feels like. He knows what it feels like to cry in the flesh. 
He knew what it felt like to be bruised in the flesh. He knew what it felt like to be ridiculed in the flesh. But because he was 100% God and he knew, that means that he already knew what his mission was. But when he was in that garden and he had to think about that cup that he had to take, some people said he was thinking about maybe the pain. No, it goes a little deeper. He was thinking about there was going to come a moment that he had to be separated from his dad. Three dark hours when all the sins of the universe fell on one man. And this one man here, he suffered for all of us. He suffered for the sins that we don't even have no clue about. He suffered for everything in, that was demonic, that's in the underworld, that's in the black world, through all the witchcraft. He, he, all those sins was laid on him to the point to where that it's been shown and told that God couldn't even look at it. Now, the father couldn't even look at how the son was bearing a burden or bearing the shame of the universe on him. One thing about it, he buried it. He didn't say, Lord, uh, let this cup pass. He wanted to let them, he said, Lord, can you let this cup pass? But he come to himself and he realized, Lord, the will has to be done. Your will has to be done. Peter here, he really tried his best to emphasize to these saints that they need to prepare themselves and understand why they're suffering. He says in that verse, as we look at it in pieces, he says in that first, uh, I call the eight calls, uh, where it says, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, comma, that's eight calls, the B calls would be on yourself likewise with the same mind, B, for he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So there's three parts in that one verse. Okay? Just look at it. He says in the first part, he says, since Christ suffered in the flesh and died for us. Y'all see that? He says, since he has suffered and died for us, now, watch this, arm yourself. The Amplified Version says, like a warrior. How many know that a warrior never goes out on a war field except he's strapped with his armor? That's why Paul talked about put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And see, when we put the armor on, the breastplate, the helmet, the sword, the shield, the shoes, all the pieces to the armor, and you'll find that in, in the book of Ephesians. I think it's in the last chapter of Ephesians, uh, where he talks about how that a man needed to put this on. And, and now, now he painted the picture of what a warrior dresses like. But now he brings this thing spiritual. I, I, I mentioned somebody, first come natural, then come spiritual. If he had to have a helmet on to fight in a war, to protect his head from whatever rocks that may be thrown or spears at that particular time. If he had to have a helmet on physically, now you got to have a spiritual helmet on. Because Satan knows how to throw darts. And he know how to throw seeds of discord into your head and into your mind. And if you're not careful, those things will penetrate. And they will stay there. And they will stay there so long to the point that you begin to operate out of your members. You start operating what is in you. I heard a statement made one time, there's only 12 inches from the mind and the heart. Whatever's in the mind, it slips in the heart, it takes growth, and when it grows, it manifests itself out through the members. That's why Jesus says, out the abundance of a man, heart, his mouth speak. Whatever's deeply rooted in his heart is going to come out of his mouth. And that's why I come, I get so frustrated sometimes listening to people trying to make the, children, make the statement, nobody needs to judge me. I, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. Well, no, we, we ain't got to judge you because if you don't line up with what's in the Bible, it's self-explanatory that you're not a Christian. Now, you might be a Christian by affiliation, but you're not a saved Christian. See, a saved Christian, once God changed him from the inside out, there's things that he don't have a taste to do anymore. 
I know people don't believe it. Facebook and YouTube, I know you don't believe it. And I can understand because especially if you're around liberal pastors uh, who's trying to find a reason for you to keep on doing the same mess that you need to be delivered from. You can go right on and keep doing that stuff, but you're going to have a judgment day surprise. Because the day that you stand before God and he says, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I know you not. Then now it's too late to make the change then. Because now you fit to be sentenced to eternal hell, where you can't correct that. Now is the time to correct it. Now is the time to change it. Well, watch this. He says, arm yourself likewise. Arm yourself like a warrior with the same purpose, being willing to suffer for doing what is right and pleasing God. It, it, it says here, in the same mind. Okay? What is the same mind? The same mind is the mind of Christ. What you mean the mind of Christ? In Christ's mind, uh, he knew that he had to suffer. And he was what? Willing to suffer. When we look at that, uh, he says, because whoever, whoever has suffered in the flesh, being like-minded with Christ. So what he was showing here, he says, if we suffer with Christ, we're going to have the same mindset as he had. And that is what? He is willing to to suffer for the cause. Yes. Are we really are we really willing to suffer for him? Think about it. Think about it. If it costs you everything that you have worked hard for, you willing to let that go for him? Are you willing to turn your back on ungodliness for him? Now that may seem like a hard question. It is for some. But for us that understand that when we sold out a long time ago, when I, when I, when I made the decision that, that there was nothing in the world that I wanted, I knew the type of guy I was. I was a habitual cusser. We laugh about it, but I said, I believe I created cuss words that they put in the book. Now, my mom and daddy didn't hear me. Because I respected them enough not to say it at their house on the ground. But when I got away from the house, I was a whole different man. But I got convicted one day. I got convicted because I was playing drums in the church and I was directing the choir and I was doing some things, but I wasn't saved. People thought I was saved. People on my job thought I was saved. Well, I really did think that, I really did think I was saved, but they were doing the same thing. They were deacons in the church. <laughs> they were trustees, they were pastors in the church, and they had girlfriends coming to the barber shop. Y'all ain't got to say man. I'm going to talk about it. I've seen it with my own eyes, but on Sunday morning and doing Bible study, they are Christians. But they had some problems. But see, I had no sense to know, no, I'm not saying I didn't tell everybody that I was just called I dressed nice and played drums and Direct and quiet. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I knew I wasn't. But see, my thing was, I knew that I wasn't ready to commit. I tried and I backslid. And I knew why I backslid. Because I wasn't really making an effort. Uh, I, I just jumped on the altar because they had this thing at the church back in the day. All oh, y'all young folks need to come to the church and get saved. They just wearing you out. Just, just, you need to get saved. And some just jumped up and said they got saved just so that the old folks and the saints would leave them alone. And I was one of them. Boy, I had to pay for that. I had to pay for it because when I really got tired, I didn't get tired of myself until I realized now I have a family. My wife and I just got married and I, I, I got tired. I, I, it's got to be more than just going now. And I, I did this thing, and I, I got to have more outside of going through the motion. I knew that I wasn't saved. But there's so many people that claim that they are saved, and some of them are saved based upon what somebody said to them. You know, just come to the altar and repeat this prayer after me, and you say saved. And then you still go out there, and you still do worse than you were before. Because no one taught them that they had to become godless sorrow for the sin that they had committed against God. And godless sorrow means remorseful. A man's got to be remorseful at how he's sinned against God, not how he has sinned against his brother and his sister. He sins against God first before he sins against his flesh. You see the picture? So how are you going to feel 
What's going to cause you to be